With me now are two of those uh, three people. Think about decriminalizing for personal possession in small amounts. That's a different issue. Uh, but, uh, but I think coming back to Mr. Emery's plight, he's explained so eloquently uh, the difference between the punishment in Canada and what might happen in the United States. And uh, in fact, we are outsourcing uh, um, prosecution and punishment in this case. If, if we are serious, then we should be charging him with the similar offenses here and prosecuting him here. And, and that, I believe, is the inherent unfairness in this. That's what I was referring to. I believe that, uh, that he wouldn't be sentenced to anywhere near five years in Canada. $200, $500 might be the limit. Uh, Ms. Davies, is this a is this a message about uh, about what what Ujol's talking about about legal pay, or is this a message about marijuana? Which are you trying to send? Well, I think it's a, a message about what the U.S. is trying to do on their completely failed strategy on the so-called war on drugs. And I think they, they really targeted Mr. Emery and tried to make an example of him. And we're really hoping uh, that the Justice Minister in, in Canada will not be a part of that. Uh, I mean, we're a sovereign nation. We should be dealing with our own laws. And I think that's what's a very important issue here. And I've talked to many, many people about this issue. And I would say across the political spectrum, people are absolutely astonished that we would have a Canadian citizen being extradited to the U.S. to face a very stiff sentence uh, when he was never uh, charged or prosecuted here in Canada uh, and when he's done no harm. So it does raise a whole number of questions. But I think the primary question right now is, is the Justice Minister going to go along with this absolutely ludicrous uh, proposition and see a Canadian citizen sent to the U.S. in a very harsh environment? Um, and so that's what I think we need to focus on right now and say to the Justice Minister that I, I agree with Mark Henry. I think he will have a lot of support in Canada if he simply says no uh, to this extradition, which he can do. But and that's what we're calling on him to do. Woodrow Assange, do you have a sense that that's what the Justice Minister is going to do? Because this is a government that's trying to show that it's tough on crime. I'm not sure that would exactly send the same message, would it? Well, you know, obviously, but, but there are other more serious criminals, violent criminals, violent offenders that we should pay attention to. I mean, this man, if he were charged with the same offenses, wouldn't be treated the same way. First of all, he's never been charged with the, with the same offenses. And if uh, our government is serious, then we should be charging him with those offenses. Here, let him serve his time here. He is a Canadian. We shouldn't be outsourcing um, prosecution and punishment. Uh, and I, I hope that, you know, this is a nonpartisan appeal. Uh, to Minister of Justice, and I hope that he listens to it and actually uh, maybe uh, acquits himself well. While they haven't done that in other cases, such as Carter and uh, others, where they should have done that. I mean, you know, they need to actually show Canadian sovereignty and some pride in being Canadians and, and make sure that people like Mr. Emery don't unnecessarily suffer. I don't condone all of his actions, but, but the, the the punishment that he's being meted out is disproportionate and wouldn't be the same in Canada. But, I think but, the, but I think the ahead, justice. Buddy. Well, I was going to say, I think the Justice Minister does have a number of, of um, avenues that whereby he could make this decision to say no. So he, he can frame that himself. And I think even just in this small debate that we've had here today, we can see uh, the different arguments that are at play and the different issues that are at play. So I do think just on the, on the sovereignty issue alone, on the severity of the punishment, the fact that he could serve his time here in Canada, like... The Justice Minister can make a very rational public policy decision here in Canadian interests, defending Canadian policy, and I think that's what we've got to emphasize and hope that he'll do that. Were you surprised, uh, Libby Davis, that Scott Reid was part of the petition, that he also stood up and, and supported Mr. Henry? Well, you know, I, 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 I was a bit surprised, but I was very glad to see him do it, and I think it's just a, a great reflection on how broad Mr. Emery's support is on this issue, um, and that, you know, to have three parties, three uh, different MPs raising this on the same day in the House of Commons, it was a huge amount of petitions, 12,000 collected across the country, um, and, you know, that says something. I mean, petitions can be a routine thing, but I think on yesterday, it really did say something about this case and the work that's being done and the seriousness of what's before us, and I really hope that Mr. Nicholson, the Justice Minister, is listening to that message um, and reflecting on it, and will will come out with a, with, a, with a good decision to say no to the extradition. Well, Joel, you, you said that you don't agree with everything that Mr. Emery has done, so don't you think that he should be punished for crimes that he has committed? I mean, doesn't that make sense? Isn't that the message you send to Canadians? I think the sentence should be proportionate to the crime, and the sentence in the U.S. is disproportionate. As he said, it's a holdover from the Bush years. Even under Obama, there's a huge new debate about decriminalizing marijuana and 
and uh, uh, reducing the, the water and life that they've engaged in. There's a whole new environment. Uh, these are holdovers from the previous era. I think we should take another look at how we treat people. Courts in this country, courts in British Columbia, the police in British Columbia, don't charge people for uh, minor offenses. Okay, both of you, thanks very much for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. That's Liberal Uber Lassange and New Democrat Libby Davies. And guess what? We'd like your opinion on all of this. So for our question of the day, we're asking you, should Mark Emery, the self-proclaimed Prince of Pot, be handed over to the U.S.? Vote and contact us at cbc.ca slash politics, politics at cbc.ca, and on Twitter at cbcpolitics.